All right, it feels like the room has signaled it's ready for this meeting. Welcome, everybody. This is the Assembly Rules Committee meeting for June 8th, 2023. It is 1.03 p.m. We'll go ahead and call this meeting to order and make introductions. George Martinez. Felix Rivera. Kevin Cross. Anna Brawley. Karen Branga. Daniel Volan. Christopher Constant. I'll say Mr. Volan is happy to be here. Yes. <laughs> Claire Ross, Legislative Services Director. Allie Hartman, uh, Legislative Services. One more time. Deanna's contract attorney. Barbara Jones, Municipal Clerk. We have an entire panorama of people in the audience, which I'm grateful to see here for this meeting. And um, we have the agenda before us. I don't know if anybody wants to add anything to the agenda. Oh, I'm sorry. Also, yeah, on the phone. Sorry. Mr. Salt and Mr. Myers, you there? Yeah, I'm sorry you're going to miss out on the cookies the ombudsman brought, but um, we can put everything else on the internet. So um, it'll be immunity.org. <laughs> yeah, you can talk to the deputy ombudsman. She's also here and probably going to enjoy some cookies. But um, so on the agenda, we have a handful of items, um, a large handful of items. And do we have anything to add? Anybody? Okay, hearing and seeing none at this time, the agenda is adopted and we will move on. The first part of our agenda, this is a fun one. <clears throat> And meaningful. We have Ms. Branca. All right, this is pretty exciting. I have known this fabulous person since junior high, probably. Uh, she's a service high graduate, and we ski race together, and uh, she is one of my constituents, and I just want to tell you a little bit about her. She is a longtime East Side resident, retired teacher, librarian. She's a recent author and just all around amazing person. Um, her love for city is above and beyond uh, with all the volunteering she did while she worked. But then when she retired, she cooked up some plan and she gave me the advice for when I retired that every day you do something for your community, something for your house, and something for yourself. And um, I just retired and went, oh, I'm doing only stuff for me <laughs> until now. But <laughs> anyway, um, Alice just, uh, she fundraised for a park in her community. She's been the Nordic Skiing Association of Anchorage, um, race secretary, put on uh, ski for kids for years. I mean, it just goes on and on. She travels to the village to teach ski lessons. Um, and before uh, poop stations were a thing, she gathered sandwich bags and uh, grocery sacks and hung them by University Lake Park, emptied the trash cans herself, pulling them on a sled. <laughs> and um, anyway, um, she made a challenge to herself because of the dog mess problem in Anchorage that, well, no, that the dog mess was the poop bag thing, but then the trash this spring and, you know, every spring, we just almost die looking at all of it. And um, I usually get out there and do one bag and feel pretty proud of myself. Um, but she challenged herself to pick up a bag of day in May. Last year she did it. This year she did it. And I looked, you know, she kept posting her bags and some days it was even two. And I am so honored that she's my constituent and that we have people like this in our city who are out there doing good. And uh, so this is Alice. Okay. 
George and I are going to sign it for him. So, uh, Mr. Perez Verdi is on the phone, <clears throat> and Ms. Bronga, you had mentioned every day the comment from Alice is, do something for your house, your community, and yourself. yourself. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations, and thank you for making our community a better place. So... <clears throat> Next, I want to read a little bit about a nomination that has happened and been accepted for employee of, is it, no, it's work group of the year. So the elections division of the municipal clerk's office has consistently performed in an exemplary fashion in stressful circumstances and represented the municipality in the way that we can all appreciate from providing countless tours of the election center to engaging with the voters through helpful information and replies on social media, the staff is always looking for ways to better connect the voter with their election system. In 2021 and 2022, staff handled a close mayoral election, a mayoral runoff, two recall elections, a special election for the 12th assembly seat, plus two regular elections, and they take it all in stride. In just the past few years, the election team has created a training program for observers, increased transparency by live streaming security camera feeds, the election center and expanded the live stream to 24 seven in 2022. These efforts are all in support of the election team's mission. Quote, we believe in fair, accurate and accessible elections. We serve and educate the community by building and sustaining our relationships with voters, election workers, candidates and community partners and increasing public participation in the democratic process of local government. Few other groups in the municipality perform their duties in the fishbowl of a constant YouTube stream with elections observers, audits, and scrutiny of the voter, the candidates in the media, and potential contests and challenges, I would add. The elections division deserves special recognition of their continued hard work and dedication to fair and honest elections. The election team goes above and beyond to make our municipal elections open, transparent, and secure. They're constantly evaluating and improving processes to implement pro-voter policies and election best practices to protect the vote. So congratulations to the elections division for your accepted nomination. And if you wanna stand up and be recognized, it'd be great. You know, I know we've got um, some, come on, Nancy, come on up. I know we have some new assembly members, so I do want to tell you who these people are so that you can put a name with the face. Um, this is Liz Edwards. How long have you worked for, for us, Liz? Uh, January 2020. January of 2020. So she's been here through a couple of tough years, and Liz is the election coordinator she does all of this IT stuff. And I want you to know that one of the themes that we use at the election center is automate everything. Because if it's automated, it's more accurate. And it takes less people and less work. And Liz is the brain behind that. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that she worked on actually is, you know, you have GIS and you have maps. And Liz is the one that pinpoints every single registered voter's address on those maps to make sure that they get the right ballot. And it's not just the right ballot. It's like probably 30 different items, you know, because if you're in the ARDSA service area, you get a different ballot than if you're not in ARTSA or if you're in ALERSA. So it's pretty complicated. It's why we have over 200 ballot styles. And Liz is the brains behind that. She also does the mail sorter and manages that and makes sure all the envelopes get scanned, the signature scanned. She supervises the signature verification team. She is an incredibly valuable person to you. I think, are you staffing a board or commission? Uh, I'm working with the ethics election and the reapportionment. So you may be seeing her soon because you're going to be looking at reapportionment again. 
the state's plan is final and um, the elections team and assembly leadership has retained your contractor to do a couple of tweaks to the map. Um, it'll reduce from 201 ballot styles to, you know, maybe 150. So we need your help with that. So you'll be seeing Liz at that, or if you're on the ethics and elections committee. Liz also updates the charter every year. So there were some charter amendments to um, that were approved on the ballot this year. And so she updates the charter and produces a booklet for you. So anyway, I just wanted you to get to know Liz Edwards. And then I'd like to talk to you about Amy Solberg. Amy, I don't know how long has it been? Eight and a half years. I think, have you have you worked here longer than Mandy? Um, yeah. yeah, so Amy is the longest person in the clerk's office except for me and Heidi. And she has done everything. <laughs> so she can schedule, she's taken minutes, she's done licensing, um, I, you've done agenda. <laughs> so um, she has really been a utility player um, Amy and I ended up at the election center in 2018. And, you know, it was me and Amy running your election that year. And um, we did it. I sort of wonder how sometimes. But um, anyway, she hires employees. She does the filing for office. She preps the ballot for you. So she pulls all the stuff that you approve on the AOs to make sure that that goes to our ballot designer. She hires the workers and orients them, works with HR and supervises the call center team. The call center at the election center was the busiest call center in the municipality one year. So um, they just do a great job. She updates the website. Um, she's just a great employee. This summer she's staffing the sanctioned ta the which task force sanctioned camps task force and she'll probably be helping after that with the health policy task force so you'll be seeing amy and i just want to make sure that you know these people are really valuable parts of the entire clerk's office team and we're really lucky to have you both and i'd also like to introduce you to nancy facet Nancy is an election worker for us. She's worked at a boat center for a number of years. She's done extra duty for us. And she's working in the clerk's office helping answer the phones because we have people on leave and we needed some help. So we're happy Nancy could be here to be recognized for this award. So thanks again, you guys, and congratulations. It was well-deserved. All right, now I'm going to give my report for the committee. <clears throat> so I have two or three things to go through. Um, <clears throat> first, the review of the Office of Equal Opportunity Processes RFP is currently being worked on by a contractor from Birch, Horton, Bittner, and Shrew, I think they're called. Um, this is pending some additional um, work. They're, they're doing their work. There's been some navigating, some uh, disagreements about the authority that the company has to help us do this analysis, but I think we've worked through a good portion of that. So we should start to see some information coming back to us. The intent of that project is for us to better understand and determine if we need to restructure the Office of Equal Opportunity to add staff to kind of change its mission, but we need to do an analysis before we really take it on. Also, we have the Title VII RFP, uh, which is the purchasing review, and that evaluation committee met recently and uh, we'll be performing reference checks next week before moving on to the next step in the award process. And um, I'm told an alcohol tax strategic plan RFP was submitted to purchasing yesterday, so they will finalize and post that in the in the near term. 
And then, you know, we have some staffing changes coming, um, whether we like it or not. And that is the clerk is retiring here at the end of the month, really in just a couple of weeks. Although she may stick around just a little bit longer if I twist her arm really hard. But uh, mostly there is a leadership committee that is running the recruitment process for now, which includes Mr. Rivera, myself, and Ms. Alatel. And we are going to meet for the first time this week to review the preliminary resumes, narrow down to the suite of individuals we believe are most qualified for the position. We will conduct interviews. We will then put forward a memorandum to the body. The body has the authority to ultimately make the decision. It's kind of much like a, an executive appointment. The assembly chair appoints through a memorandum and the assembly chooses to determine the qualifications of that individual. We are choosing what might feel like an abrupt timeline because our plan is to have a decision opportunity before the body this month. And so um, it looks like we're going to schedule a special meeting and a work session on the 23rd, which is a Friday, to um, allow the assembly the opportunity to um, have a confirmation conversation with the nominee, the appointee, and then afterwards for us to schedule a vote and decide if th that is the right individual. And so <clears throat> between now and then, the three of us, Ms. Alto, myself, and Mr. Rivera, will be conducting those interviews and getting that process underway. And so the intent, like I said, is to use that day in which we're having a celebration of Barbara's retirement also as a day in which we confirm, hopefully, a new clerk. We have had nine eligible applicants who submitted and why I say it might feel abrupt, but it's not, is the application process began in March. The publication of the job notification, the vacancy was the first, I think the very first day of May. We're now some five weeks past that, and we're gonna take the opportunity now to review and get to the members, best candidate or candidates to review. Then, I wanted to let members know that Carissa Sleppy, who's been serving as acting deputy municipal clerk for the last few weeks, has decided that she preferred to stay on the agenda team for the assembly. And so we are happy to accommodate her. And because of our agenda, because our agendas are so challenging and important, and Chris has done an excellent job, we're grateful for her to be able to stay in that position. We've recently recognized her as employee of the quarter for that job. So fortunately, the clerk's office and agenda team has a good team. Some of you may know Jasmine Akers, who's worked on the agenda team for the last year. Jasmine comes to the assembly through the Air Force, where she served as an intelligence analyst and brings many skills and talents to the clerk's office in the assembly. She currently handles assembly records and has served to back up Travis's minutes clerk and is familiar with our meetings. She staffs the assembly equity committee and has done great with that very challenging group. My script says complex, I say challenging. In consultation with assembly leadership, Jasmine will be appointed to acting deputy clerk in the next few weeks and her appointment as subject to confirmation before it would become an actual deputy clerk um, will be coming before the assembly unless she too decides she'd rather stay in her current job, which we would understand because stepping up is always a challenge. It's a lot of work. I'm sure you'll get to meet her and work with her more in the next few weeks. And then we will get to talk with her directly at a hearing to ensure that you all agree to her qualifications. So I think that covers, every, oh no, I have one other thing. Um, the calendar has been getting really full and it's really full, not just with assembly business, with sub-business and sub-business of sub-business, task forces, working groups, and all of that other um, kind of content that is essential. It's just time consuming. And um, so I certainly wouldn't want to dissuade anyone from leadership on complex issues, but time is a factor. And so um, as of this morning, I had five work sessions that I needed to figure out where to put. And thankfully we moved one item to July. So I'm grateful to the sponsors of the bicycle ordinance who've agreed to move that meeting to either the 7th or 8th of July, which will open up an hour and a half on the 16th Friday for us to slide in a work session. And since that's an hour and a half, we're gonna plug the Navigation Center work session to Friday the 16th at 9.30. <clears throat> we also have to figure out where to put the Scofflaw a, a work session as well as the trust and the alcohol ordinance. And so 
I'm like literally packing in the corners of our agendas. And these are rough times. The clerk will be sending out notifications, invitations shortly. But the 14th Wednesday from 10 to 11, I did find an hour for the scofflaw ordinance. And then on the 15th Thursday from basically 2 to 3, it could be 2.10 to 3 or I'm not exactly sure, but 2 to 3, a work session on the proposed trust board. And then from 3 to 4, a work session on the proposed alcohol reorganization ordinance. And so it was really tricky to figure all that out. And so I just want folks to be thoughtful when they're looking at all of this additional work to know that we need to be prioritizing. And the hard decision I was going to have to make today was going to be to ask folks which of those items that some, everyone has one of those that's important to them. They don't mind being postponed another meeting because that's the practical reality is if, if people want a work session and the item is scheduled and we can't schedule it before the work session, folks need, I'm, I'm going to ask folks to be flexible in the date of that final action because that's the one thing that's flexible is the date we do the hearing, date that do the final action. And so, but I was able to work it out this time without having to come forward and try to twist people's arms because we had a volunteer. It's like an airplane. So with that, I think that's, oh, that's right. I'm going to pass out this document to the members. Finally, I promised on the 8th I would get for you the list of liaisons and finality. I did have to move like one person, I think, off of something that they wanted for someone else who didn't have anything. But I think everybody got something that they wanted on the liaisons. Um, for the Municipal League, it will be members Rivera and Brawley. AMAT's policy is members Zalatel and Vaughn with alternate cross. Anchorage Chamber is going to be um, member Martinez and myself. Um, I'm happy to allow that to be someone else if they are interested. Anchorage Community Development Authority, Mr. Cross and Mr. Volland. I know that some people don't want more. <laughs> um, Anchorage Convention and Visitors Bureau members, Bronga and Pres Verdia. Um, Anchorage Economic Development Corporation, Mr. Johnson and Mr. Salt. By the way, Mr. Johnson is excused today. Um, Chugiak Eagle River Chamber of Commerce, obviously the members from Eagle River, Chugiak. Um, the Federation of Community Councils, the chair and the vice chair, National Association of Counties, um, Ms. Zalatel and Mr. Salt, and then National League of Cities, uh, myself and Ms. Brawley. So that concludes the reorganization process. I'm sorry it took this long, but it just there's a lot of moving parts. And I think at the end of this year, uh, when people look back and say, what was the legacy of Chair Constant, they're going to say change management because everything is changing really quickly at all, every level of our branch. And so, in fact, I would note that we just received the resignation letter of the auditor, Michael Chadwick. And so we'll be looking for a new auditor coming up very soon as well. And so, um, like I said, change is probably going to be the legacy I leave. And it's cliche, I hear it all the time, but that's what they say is there's only one constant in the world and that's change. So, um, yeah, it's terrible, I know. I think that covers everything. Am I forgetting anything, anyone? No? Okay, so next on the agenda, then we have a briefing from the clerk. We'll go with first before we get to... I, well, aren't you going to move into this, or is that a separate item? Okay, so that's fine. Then go ahead. Thank you. Our biggest accomplishment in legislative services this month is we onboarded Jennifer Veneclassen as our new legislative and policy analyst. And it's very exciting to be able to delegate some work to her and she's off and running. I think she's been trying to meet with each of you. So if you hadn't had a chance to meet with her, please do so. Um, it's been really helpful to figure out what your priorities and issues are. Uh, she's also developed a tracker for intake of um, all of your requests so we can do a better job of organizing and prioritizing that. She is staffing the Safe Routes to Schools Working Group and the Proposition 14, that was the uh, use of the marijuana taxes for early learning. Um, she is staffing the implementation, implementation team for that. And then she's also working on the legislative committee, uh, which brings me to our the new legislative committee uh, chair, Anna Brawley, and Jennifer and I met this week, last week, who knows, and all blends together uh, to plan out our 2024 approach. And that will include meeting, having different um, members meet with legislators this summer and fall so we can update them and then coming up with the 20, 
24 legislative program and figuring out what are the top priorities you want to advocate for next year's session. We, I'm going to hand it over to Allie to give a communications update. Other things we've worked on, Allie um, is very near getting the three and four plex legislation in the hopper um, uh, with help from Amanda Moser, our contractor who helped a little bit with that. But Allie did a ton of work to lead a work group through that process. And um, I think she got the proposed changes to council for their review. So hopefully you'll be seeing that soon. We've been staffing the demobilization task force, the sanctioned camp task force and the behavioral health and helping them get up and running. Um, do you want a couple more? To task, staff? Task forces, yeah. <laughs> no. No. All right. Okay, good. That was the response I was hoping. I think task forces should be self-service now. <laughs> you create them, you staff them. No. Of course, we're always willing to help if you have other needs. I, there was a subtle communication there. <laughs> it, it's we were gladly jumped in because it's it, we, it seemed to be the assembly's top priority and a very important thing for our community so we were happy to take all that work on this past month uh um heather McAlpin with the ombudsman office is running the youth representative program so we got to check in with the youth uh representative jesse and the alternate jake this week and they um were just mentioned that a number of you have been helping get them onboarded and they feel very welcome and engaged. So that was good to hear that feedback. Um, we are going to have a legislative services retreat next week so we can plan out our workload and make sure we have our work balance to help you with all of your needs. And then uh, a reminder that we have a table, the assembly has a table at the Juneteenth Chamber of Commerce event on Monday the 19th. And I'll send an email reminder. We still have some seats open for that. And then in August, I believe, is the AEDC annual luncheon that we have a table that we'll need to fill. So I'll be letting you know about that. And then I'll hand it over to Allie to give a communications update. Sure. Before, wait, before oh. you do that, two things. Ms. Brawley. Yeah, Claire, sorry. And the, the legislative committee, I hope you, um, I think it'd be relevant to also talk about the a uh, potential work session we had proposed with um, our lobbyist. Thanks. Yeah, as part of the contract that you that you all created last year with the lobbyist, it includes a debriefing and a briefing. And so we did have that briefing with her last December, which was really, she said it was really useful to hear directly from members to get a better idea of the issues. And so now it's time for the debriefing and we're working to get that scheduled probably in July. Uh, and then the legislative committee will meet later in the month uh, to get her feedback. Some of the things we want to know is how did Anchorage fare in the budget process? Are there items that Anchorage got funded in the budget that we need to know about and where the status of your 2023 priorities are? And I would add that I'm waiting for a briefing back from the administration, but up until March, we had a federal lobbyist and I'm trying to ensure that we get a parallel briefing from our federal lobbyist through the committee into a work session. Um, and I'm still trying to identify who is the point of contact at the firm blank room, but it turns out, it appears that the contract was somehow not reauthorized, that there was some procurement related issues, not because of the purchasing department, I think because of the eighth floor. And so we're waiting for clarity if we actually have a federal lobbyist now, because I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to get them on the task of working with the HUD director, the secretary, and make sure that our lobbyists are working with us to um, make sure HUD understands the gravity of the situation relating to the resolution. So. Um, also, one thing more that you didn't mention tomorrow morning, Juneteenth, isn't it tomorrow morning? We're doing that next thing. Week. Oh, it's next week. Oh, thank God. you. Yeah. Next week, not tomorrow. So don't show up early, but 8 a.m. Yeah. Members, 7.30. 7.30 if members want to show up next Friday in celebration of Juneteenth, the assembly branch is setting up a table out here and we're giving away treats and trying to make our employees feel great from 7.30 to 8.30 next Friday. Sorry. Thank you. Now, Allie. Fabulous. Um, I am here today to share a little bit of um, data analytics around the Assembly website. Um, for those of you who don't know, over the last year, um, 
Legislative Services has been working to um, remodel the website. And part of that remodel um, has been a tool called the Focus Pages. And so the Focus Pages are a way for uh, the public to see uh, what the Assembly is doing on some of your hot topics and priorities. And so uh, today's focus is the focus on homelessness page. The focus on homelessness page is on the assembly website. It's a blue button with a key and it says homelessness. And this is a space to draw together all of the assembly's work across legislation, committees, work sessions, task forces, and other community engagement opportunities um, across the way. Oh, I could actually probably pull it up and plug in. Yeah, take a look at it. TVs on. I don't know if we can navigate to the website with the screens we have. She has to plug in. Oh, that doesn't have the internet there. Oh, it's okay. Sorry to interrupt again. Might as well show though. Alrighty, here we go on an adventure tour de website. Um, so this is the assembly website. You'll see that just this morning I updated it for our summertime banner. Love that here. And uh, under hot topics, we've got our blue button here, um, which is the focus on homelessness page. Um, as I mentioned, this page is all about bringing together the assembly's work and presenting it um, for the public to enjoy um, and connect with and engage with. Um, a couple of cool things about this website, um, we have an embedded calendar feature. So this is all of the upcoming um, events and business around um, addressing homelessness, including committee meetings and task force meetings and work sessions, et cetera. Um, and so that is a really um, uh, curated event feed for those that are interested in fo uh, following and tracking this issue. Um, we also have some really great context um, around the assembly's work and then um, an overview of the current ongoing initiatives, including a Gantt chart, which kind of lays out the timeline, um, along with little drop downs for each of the task forces and initiatives with um, some more information. So uh, before I went on vacation uh, about a week ago, I pulled some data around the utilization of this page. Um, from March 15th through the end of May, the page was viewed more than 1,800 times by more than 700 unique visitors. Um, during that period, the most popular link was this clean slate strategy button up here. Um, and so that is, you know, over the course of 10 weeks, um, uh, the number one uh, clicked link on this page. But we also saw some uh, really great um, traffic over the course of that period. So notably, um, the, the day where this page was the highest viewed or the most trafficked um, was May 23rd when the Sanction Camps uh, Task Force released their recommendations um, and brought them uh, to the May 23rd um, regular assembly meeting. Um, interestingly as well, uh, the next one of the, the top um, clicked links on this page was to the May 24th Housing and Homelessness Committee meeting. Um, so that was a meeting that really focused on housing, but brought together lots of community organizations. And you can imagine that if you're presenting or you told your team, oh, I'm going to present to the assembly, that maybe your teammates might want to tune in or look at the agenda, et cetera. So um, all this to say, this is a, a really exciting tool and I think a, a productive collaboration um, in terms of um, you know, working with a chair of a committee to, to bring together resources on a specific topic. Um, and I uh, hope that your, your takeaway from this conversation is to direct people to the assembly website, www.muni.org slash assembly. Um, folks will get the, the information that they need or are looking for. And if not, um, they'll have the, the connections um, to get the resources that they need. So thank you.
Is that it? So would it be possible to get a breakdown of the analytics for us in some kind of report? Yeah, I'd love that. It'd be great. Thank you. So we all see it. Okay, then Madam Clerk. That mic has been being problematic. And so if it gives us feedback, maybe we'll swap mics and see if that makes it better. Okay, I'll try to be good. Um, I usually tell you three things and um, my favorite thing to talk about is the clerk's office team. And we get, did get to talk about the elections team. Um, I think most of the rest of the staff has left, but um, know that everybody in the clerk's office um, as well as ledge services does um, help out on election day, election week at different times with election functions. Um, the second thing that I'm going to tell you, talk to you about today is having boards and commissions appear at the Rules Committee. And um, that is something that um, Chair LaFrance asked Claire and I to look at. And we, we got started. You heard from the Arts Advisory Commission. Um, we, you'll be hearing shortly from the Board of Ethics. And um, we're open to having more people come. We'd like to know what your priorities are. And we have this little cheat sheet here. And um, we have some ideas about which ones are priorities. You can write on this and return it to us at the top of the document. It has where it's available on a Google Doc. If you would prefer to go to the Google Doc and just enter your preferences there, that would be fine too. So I'm going to go ahead and pass that around. The third thing that I'd like to talk to you about today is that the chair asked us to do some training at the Rules Committee meetings. And we used to have a training task force, and the Rules Committee met twice a month. Um, that is just not possible given your current schedule and current workload. So today you're going to have a five-minute training on recognition resolutions. And we'll see if I can get it done in five minutes. But you'll look forward to seeing some small training topics on um, at the Rules Committee meeting in the future. And those are my three things. Thank you. So the first of uh, this assembly's trainings will be on the Board of Ethics. And welcome, um, Mr. Ervasti. Do you work for the municipal attorney? I do. Uh, thank you. So good afternoon, Chair Conson and members of the assembly. So my name is Paul Ervasti. I'm normally the administrative hearing officer for the municipality. Uh, but one of my other duties is to serve as one of the legal counsel for the Board of Ethics. Um, so section 170 of the Municipal Code of Ethics requires the Board of Ethics to submit an annual report to this committee. So what I'm here primarily to do is, on behalf of the board is to submit that report and give you an overview of the board's work uh, during 2022. Um, I know that it's a packed agenda and there's a lot of uh, stuff on the agenda today. So what I'd like to do is maybe just make three points about the report that'll take probably less than a minute. And then really, I'm just here to answer any questions that committee members have about the uh, Board of Ethics report for last year. Um, so the first point that I wanted to make is basically about the board's workload. So if you look at the board's report, the statistics and the numbers in there, all of it can basically be summarized is that 2022 was a fairly busy year for the board. Um, so they did meet 16 times, including a number of special meetings that were necessary when they had to take witness testimony um, to resolve certain complaints or certain issues that were brought up. Um, um, so it was a fairly busy year. And uh, I think I speak on behalf of everybody in expressing appreciation for all these volunteer board members um, that had to give up their time you know, and, and schedule these special meetings. Um, and their dedication to public service in, uh, in being there uh, to resolve all the issues that they needed to resolve last year. Um, the second point is about the uh, individual cases themselves. So all the ethics complaints and the advisory opinions that the board issued are now uh, published on the municipal website. So last year, the municipal clerk's office did a great job, particularly Jenna Brister, um, she spent a lot of work getting that up to date and get, making sure that all the opinions are now published on the website. 
So if any of the committee members had any specific questions or wanted to take a deeper dive into what the board was doing and look at those opinions, those are all published on the website now and, and the link to the website is in the annual report. Um, and then the third point was dealing with one of the main efforts uh, that the board did last year, which was uh, working with D primarily and providing input and review on changes to the code of ethics. Um, so I think it was Terry and Becky that spent a lot of time um, really looking at those proposals on on changes to uh, the conflict of interest section uh, and making trying to make that that easier to apply and uh, more clear uh, for public servants. So the board was happy to do that and again expresses uh, thanks to D for taking the lead on that, uh, but also wants the committee to know if you know they're happy to do stuff like that in the future. So if there's anything that's unclear that it's that's proving difficult to apply in practice, um, they're happy to try and make that easier for public servants so that everybody can comply with the code of ethics. Um, so with those three points, that's really all that the, uh, you know, again, I know it's a packed agenda. So I just wanted to, as they present the annual report, uh, be here in case anybody had any questions about it. So I'm not seeing any questions. Um, do you staff the meetings? I do. So the two legal counsel, myself, and then uh, another counsel from the municipal attorney's office uh, attend each of those meetings. Do you see any potential conflicts between you being the hearing officer and also staffing the ethics board? I don't because uh, the board of ethics doesn't typically deal with any issues that, that would later come to me for a hearing. I, if it did, if it were to come up, I suppose the solution would, I might have to recuse myself from a hearing case later on, but that's never happened in the past. Yeah. Who would the alternative be? I think they would probably contract with office of administrative hearings or, or find, find somebody, party. find somebody okay. to do the hearing. Fine. That's good. Um, Mr. Presbyterian. Just, just a brief question. I know a number of, of assembly members have come before the Board of Ethics. Just a, a process question of if an assembly member needed to or felt like they wanted to become come before the board, what's that process? We, we've heard it's sort of different whether you show up or whether there's an appointment. And if you could just give us some 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 explanation as to if there was a, a desire or need from an assembly member, what would be that process? The best process would be to probably submit a request for an advisory opinion. Um, so any public servant can request an opinion about matters related to themselves. So if it's an issue personal um, to that assembly member, they can request an advisory opinion, then the board will deal with them. Uh, and it would be up to that assembly member whether, they're they're, whether they would want their request to be confidential or not. Um, so they could either uh, waive confidentiality and have the meeting be public, or they could get a confidential opinion. The advisory opinions that are public, published on the website are all redacted in case uh, somebody has requested confidentiality on that advisory opinion. Anyone else? So, um, boy, there's so many things that I could speak about and ask questions about. Um, I don't know if you have heard from folks at the port, but um, I've been asking organizations within the municipality who seem to not quite understand the methods and purposes of the ethics code to just reach out to the ethics board and um, ask for briefings, trainings, maybe a member of the board to come and have a conversation with them. And so um, I don't know, I realized after the fact that, and I even volunteered our, one of our contract attorneys, if, if they couldn't find someone to help them start figuring out how to do this, has, do you know if the ethics board in the past has had a kind of educational component where they help different parties in the muni understand how it works and why? They do. There's a section of the code that specifies one of the duties of the board of ethics is to provide that education. I think last year, the only uh, entity that requested any training was the uh, Girdwood board of supervisors. So I think they, uh, the other staff attorney for the Board of Ethics went out and gave some of that training. Uh, but again, that's something that the board is happy to do if, if, if they're aware of the need. Similar question then would be how would one of those organizations avail themselves of that 
Um, so any organization could get, a, there's the contact information for the staff that's on the annual report. Um, so either myself, uh, Carissa, uh, Megan, who's the other staff attorney, if they could get up with one of the staff members for the Board of Ethics, we could arrange that training. Right, so the, it's reach out to the staff and just see what can be done. Okay, that's helpful. And then finally, what is the timeline for, uh, if I wanted to ask the board a question about my, my own professional um, relationships and whether they are significant or not, or get an opinion, what's the timeline? They, it kind of depends. So there's with five board members with every spot filled, I know they're a lot quicker now on turning those advisory opinions around and they do work very hard on them, uh, but it kind of depends on how many uh, complaints they've received at that time, whether they can get to it that month or whether they need to schedule a special uh, hearing. But generally within a couple months, within two to three months, they've addressed an issue and uh, issued an opinion. Okay, so what I heard is within two to three months, but if it's especially on fire, maybe a little sooner. It, it depends uh, how many other issues they have yeah. before. I appreciate an attorney uh, loyally answer of it depends. <laughs> that is a, it's not a bad answer. Um, although one I hear a lot. So anyone else? I think that what members of the body, especially the new ones should know is that the ethics board is there to help you, that you should use them, especially if you find yourself operating in a place where you feel gray because if you feel gray, then the public probably is going to see gray. Um, and obviously the assembly is the judge, the final question, not the ethics board. And um, thank you for being here. And we look forward to an ongoing conversation. And I hope you hear from the port, especially the port commission on um, one of those educational opportunities. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you. So that now brings us to the unfinished business of the agenda tabled is the update on a potential lawsuit relating to the BSA. Maybe one day we'll get the bandwidth back to talk about that. The next one is the dangerous routes to school crossings conversation. I know we're having a joint meeting with the school board tomorrow, and I believe there's a meeting of this task force. So um, with that as the foundation, I'll hand it over to Mr. Bond. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, we will be meeting tomorrow. And at that meeting, um, I plan to bring forward a, a, the draft, the working draft of the raised routes for kids ordinance that um, myself and member cross and member Stolt have been working on for some time. Um, so it'll be the first time that we bring that forward to that working group for them to be able to see it. Um, I imagine that it, there will still be a process that we have to go through to um, incorporate a lot of different feedback and, um, you know, traffic director will be there, et cetera. So look forward to seeing that continue to get some momentum. Thanks. Thank you. So more on that tomorrow. And then there's also the next item, Anchor School Board Assembly Working Group to discuss youth involvement. Now, I don't know that that one's going to survive tomorrow, but I will be discussing it as we get there tomorrow at, at the joint meeting. And the purpose of that meeting was to talk about creating a kind of a youth focused, um, and we called it a summit initially, but uh, some kind of a process by which we engage with the school district, talking about leadership in the community, which might help to create a better feeder for the youth member um, program. And so it was kind of interesting and complex. And I don't think we ever really settled on a vision for what it was, which is probably why it's languishing. Okay, next on the agenda. Chair. Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Uh, Martinez. Yeah, just uh, what time tomorrow for these meetings? So uh, what time is the safe routes to school? It's nice and late. Uh, I'll have to double check, but I'll email you. Yeah, I think it's 8.30, right? And then the joint meeting, is is it 10 to noon or is it 9.30 to yeah, 10 to noon? We do that quarterly in the charter. It's required. This one is kind of we're hosting, but it's happening at the school district. Um, where does the calendar invite from that come from? The clerk's office. All right. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I always have calendar issues trying to go between all the calendars. Miss a meeting here and there, but that one's pretty regular, and we will schedule the next one tomorrow. And I want to confirm that the Safe Routes Working Group is publicly noticed. 
I believe. Barbara, do you know? The Safe Routes to School Working Group, I think, is publicly noticed. Yeah, so any assembly members can attend. It is publicly noticed. I think we only send the Outlook invite, though, to the three members who are participants. So I think that's why it's not showing up on your calendar. I think he's talking about the school district meeting, though, mm -hmm. the joint meeting. Are you on that one? No. Yeah, so oh. this okay. is just a feature of the transition of leadership. The invite went out a quarter ago. And sorry, I didn't get back to you. Oh, and just a reference to, if I may. Yeah. The reference to the three members that you were just describing is for the safe routes to schools working group okay which is publicly noticed so you're all welcome to but we didn't clog people's calendars okay um who don't usually go and just for clarity the other youth leadership group is doesn't exist is that it'll be a topic of conversation probably tomorrow between um the president of the school board and myself we had some energy on the topic but it's kind of dwindled and it's if you have energy, we'll talk. Um, yeah, yeah. If, if you're interested. But otherwise, it's one of those things that's probably going to – Margo and I talked about it, but we just never could get it square. It failed to launch. And so – I will remind the chair of my history with the youth development sector absolutely. of the commission, the youth rep. And so, yeah, this is of an area of interest. Yeah, and there's that old adage, the world is run by those who show up. Now that you're here, you can run it. Send a calendar invite. Tomorrow at 10. We'll see you there. I formally invite you now. <laughs> and all of the new members who might not have gotten that invite. Okay, so next on the agenda, and again, we might need IT to check out the, the, this because there is a slight feedback loop starting, and it's been kind of bad at a couple different points today, and I'm not sure what's going on. It's brand new today. Um. The first item then under the new, oh no, unfinished business, the last item of unfinished business, Mr. Hess, Community Council Boundary Changes Conversation. Thank you. Um, the uh, Community Council Boundary Advisory Committee has been working diligently the last two or three months. Uh, originally, the committee was asked to commit to two or three meetings uh, the committee has held four meetings so far and has taken action on uh, 26 out of 39 boundary study areas. So the committee has voted a no change, retain existing boundaries position on 13 boundary study areas that only had one public uh, comment. Only one person uh, proposed them. Uh, the committee has taken a no change, retain existing boundaries position recommendation on nine study areas that had more than one comment, that more than one person recommended those changes. And the committee has only voted to recommend four boundary changes so far. And those involve Turning and Arm Community Council and Portage Valley Community Council, uh, Rogers Park and Airport Heights Community Council, South Edition and Fairview Community Councils, and Bayshore Clatt and Old Seward Ocean View Community Councils. They're fairly minor boundary changes. And in all four instances, both community councils supported the changes. Um, the next committee meeting is scheduled for Monday, June 12th from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Permit Center. And at that meeting, the uh, committee will consider the remaining 13 boundary study areas. There will be a motion to uh, approve a position for four of those study areas as one package and then nine study areas will actually be discussed and reviewed by the committee and they involve northeast and scenic foothills three of the study areas four study areas involve university area tudor area and campbell park and two study areas involve taku campbell and beige or clat and so staff left the more controversial 
uh, uh, recommendations to the last meeting. So hopefully the committee will wrap up its work on June 12th and then the recommendations of the committee will be finalized by planning when we'll go to the planning and zoning committee commission and then ultimately to the assembly for final action. And if the chair would like, I can send the memo that outlines the work that the committee has taken already. I can send that to all the members if they'd like to see it. If there's a meeting on the 12th in which additional action is going to take place, why don't you wait until after that okay. meeting and then send out having all of the councils been reviewed at least once. Great. Good idea. And after hearing Daryl's report, as you can hear, the intent is this is going to be a very fast process. Thank you. All those steps. So thank you for that report. I look forward to seeing the data. Um, anyone have questions for Mr. Hess? Nope. Okay. Thank you. Next on the agenda, we will have a brief training on assembly recognition resolutions. Uh, here we go. So the background I want to tell you about recognition resolutions is that the clerk's office has 49 annual recognition resolutions. They are on this list right here that you have that is printed so small you probably can't read it. But I do have it printed larger and I can pass this out if you'd like to sign up today. If you sign up today and put an X in your name for these recognition resolutions, you will be a sponsor for those recognition resolutions. We do not call and ask if you'd like to be a, mem a sponsor. If you don't sign up, you won't be a sponsor. Um, so it's, it's just not something we can do with 49 of them. We just can't contact people and ask about that. We did a little test. There were an additional 46, what we call pop-up resolutions. That is a total of 94 resolutions per year, which means three per meeting. As you know, a lot of these are for Black History Month or Women's History Month or these months, and those are gonna be on the first day of the month. So we recognized that we had a little issue one meeting where you had 10 recognition resolutions on the agenda. And so we have decided um, with input from the chair that we may ask you to bump your pop-up resolution recognizing a community member to the second meeting of the month so that you end up with, you know, if, you, if we have four, there's a couple of months where you have four on the first meeting of the month and so instead of adding yours and having five, we'll ask you to move it to the second. You know what? If it ends up that you have five, you know, okay, this is for your constituents. We'll be happy to do it. That's up to you. We'll just ask. So um, if you have one of these um, pop-up resolutions, you need to contact the clerk's office. And Heidi Caban is the agenda coordinator and the team lead in the clerk's office on recognition resolutions. So just email the agenda team and there she's listed right there on the second bullet there. Just send the email to Heidi and say, I want a recognition resolution for whatever. If you say, I want a recognition, a conceptual resolution, I have this idea and I would like this. You have to give us at least a week. If you could give us longer, that would be even better. You can't tell us the day before the meeting, the agenda deadline, that you have this idea for a resolution. If you have a resolution drafted, and I've provided the template there for you and provided the location on the G drive, so you can get that from a Muni computer. Um, if you have a conceptual resolution drafted, if you could get that to us 
or actually that's not a conceptual, that would be a one in almost final format. If you can get that to the clerk's office, you just send it to the agenda team 24 hours before the agenda team. Heidi can get it formatted. She spell checks it for you. She um, adds a number to it and we can get that on the agenda for you. It usually takes a little bit longer than that. Um, there are some norms regarding recognition resolutions and you got that email um, yesterday from the chair. It says 12 point font, it says one page. And I will tell you that there was a time where people, George knows what I'm talking about. People would be reading on to the second page and you know, you thought, is anybody listening to me? You know, um, so that's when the assembly decided you need to limit those because they just kind of got too long and took too much time. Um, so uh, let's see. Oh, let us know if you have receivers for your pop-up resolution. The clerk's office can coordinate that for you or you can coordinate it. Tell us you've got five, you've got 10, you've got 30. It's the East High football team. We'll do one for all of the kids. Um, and I'm at four minutes. Thank you for allowing us to recognize these outstanding people in our community and just let Heidi or me or anyone know. And I should add, Heidi spreads the wealth among the clerk's office. Um, Brandy helps, um, Ledge Services, and Daryl is like a master. So on, we have a sign-up sheet where staff signs up. And so Anna contacted us this week about one, and we said, Amelia is doing that. Work with Amelia. And so that's what's going to happen. We're going to tell you who's the staff assigned for that. So I'll add that one week is probably not enough time to get a pop-up and a resolution that needs a lot of staff support for because our staff is generally pretty tasked. And so while the clerk said a week, I think it's closer to two to three weeks if you want it done right and you want it without error and you want it just right with the right people in the room, the right number of them printed. And so just keep in mind that the more lead time, the more effective it's gonna be. Legislative services can sometimes help if there is some drafting that you want or kind of framing, but really the clerk's team is there to make these things happen. Barbara, what is the red, did you say? So on the spreadsheet, and I'm going to pass this one out, we have not had people show up to accept the orange ones. So we're a little bit concerned about continuing those. That's why they're marked that way. If you say, no, absolutely, I want to do this, and I'm going to get you a contact for that, that would be great. The red one is one that we're probably not going to continue next year. If you have other ideas of ones that you want to add or discontinue, you may let us know. Kids to Parks had a person who swore to me. Yeah, and I think also so did the um, ADA one last year. So, um, Barbara, rather than have people make 49 X's, would it be okay if we suggested instead the inverse that mark the ones you don't want to be on? Absolutely. That is just fine. That way it's much more legible and easy to read. Although that inverse is to the one for the mayor, but it, it doesn't matter. yeah. Here is the Mr. Cross, you had a question? Just curious, um, in the past, because the resolutions, sometimes we never know, you know, how long it's going to take or what that's going to look like. Has there ever been um, discussion of limiting to just four or five, or you talked about distributing these so that they're more equally distributed throughout the month? I'm going to jump in there and say I consider it all the time. When I see nine on the agenda, well, I think we have to do better. So, in, or, listen, I, I love the constraints on can you keep it to one page? Uh, your whereas is, I mean, one thing is, I, I tell you, when you have to read something and you sit down and like you're going to be reading this and you look at two pages and you're like, okay, let's get a cup of coffee. I'm going in. Got my, I'm going to hydrate halfway through. There's going to be an intermission. Like, so I appreciate that. Hey, listen, I understand that there's some things we want to make sure we describe, but you're exactly right because I see them wandering off. And so if we can keep it concise, if we can, if we can accomplish the whole resolution and reading in less than, 
like five minutes recognition. So you keep it to within 15 minutes a piece or what does that look like by being more efficient? Just, I'm interested in the efficiency part of that because a lot of people out there, I mean, the, the rec I, I do recognize it's really important, but again, I just, there's oftentimes we have a lot of really important business to go and then we end up going late. And what happens is I, I'm personally after 10, I'm not on my ball. You know what I mean? And I want to make sure my brain is, <laughs> is in the best way I can serve my constituents. And so how do I push up some of those more important items to earlier in the evening when I'm, when I'm, I'm firing on all eight cylinders? Thank you. Mr. Cross, through the chair, I am on your side on efficiency, but I'm doing it on the back end. You all have to handle your meeting how you want to handle it. The chair is responsible for the agenda. I, I, I don't have any advice for you on that. I think I did get a question this week about how do you limit speakers? You know, because what if you have um, like the football team and every one of the, you know, the kids do say their names and you probably want to hear them say their names because then their mom and dad go and click on your agenda and listen to them say their names, get more clicks there. Um, so, you know, I, I think that's important but you have to think of some ways to manage that. And I'm sorry, I'm not the person to ask that. Follow up? Sure. Chris, have you discussed on those months <laughs> where we have a boatload, whether on that particular month we have a special assembly meeting just for resolutions right. and acknowledgements when we yeah. have 12 or 15 to go through? So that conversation has happened. And um, I think there's only been one case where there was nine in my experience in all six years plus. And so it's not normal, but even five starts to feel like we're pushing it because it kicks the meeting. However, the counter argument to the idea of a special meeting is the purpose of those documents is to recognize people when the, the regular meetings are happening so that the public who tunes in to what I've heard is called the best show in town um, to see what we're celebrating and who we're commemorating. And so, I haven't spent time narrowing it, but I have thought a lot about it. If it's the wall of this group to have me spend some time thinking through a policy change, we will. Currently, the policy change to address this that um, we've come up with thus far is what was in the email yesterday was keep it to one page, give us lead time, and be flexible in terms of when the item gets on the agenda because we're juggling. If the next step is let's come up with a limitation per meeting, we're fine to have that discussion or maybe special meetings. We'll talk about that and then come back with a proposal. All right. Thank you. So Mr. Presbyterian and then Ms. Braga. I was at a, a, a place yesterday where someone said, Hey, I, I saw last week's last week's episode of the assembly. So yeah. I thought that was really kind of a nice it's way to true. put it. And, and the, the main character did this. So um, anyway, um, the uh, my, my question really is about when when these resolutions, there's been a number of them in my experience where it's come forward and and there's been some language in it that um, that we needed to change because it it over time we're learning things and we need to change, change them. And, um, and and I realized that the ideal way to do that is to prepare um, the, uh, the amendment and that sort of thing prior to, to, to the meeting starting. Got, got that. The, the challenge often is, is that we're in a routine of these, these, these things and it becomes really challenging in that moment to have a debate about, about an amendment, about these, these resolutions. So my, my question is, is it, is what I found though, is that that change that we made in the previous year, didn't make it to the next year, um, because it was an on the floor amendment. And so one question I have is how do we walk through these? And and really my thought is making sure that they're historically accurate and that the, the language, I mean, for instance, one, one resolution was, you know, the, 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 the history of law enforcement began a hundred years ago in, in Anchorage when this, when, when, when time started, right. And, and, and being able to go, well, no, time didn't start 100 years ago, right? Time started before that. So, but that didn't show up in the next year. And so that's the, the question is, how do we make sure that the language um, is, is something that carries over? Do you have any idea about that? Certainly, through the chair. That is super, super simple. You know, on our little cheat sheet, 
We have a hyperlink to the last draft, and we're obviously picking up the last draft instead of the last approved draft as amended. I'll just send a reminder to staff to do that, to be sure to get that as amended. And then the next thing I'll tell you is I don't want you to ever have to amend an honorary resolution on the floor. I mean, that is just so painful for the recipients and the members. That should never, ever happen. And um, Mr. Presbordia, if you're interested, you know, you see there's such and such resolution, you know, we can email you the draft of the last year's one. You can edit it. Now, uh, Ms. Brawley contacted the staff about the refugee one. And so they're exchanging emails on that. So um, if we have a key sponsor, even on an annual resolution that says, I am interested in this topic, kids to parks, whatever it is, the staff will email you. We aren't going to email everybody because because you can imagine what that would be violation of the Open Meetings Act, among other things. So um, we're not going to email everybody, but if you have an interest, let us know so we can fix those. Thanks. Actually, the idea I, I have that might work is to bring these to the um, equity committee and maybe I can get, we can get drafts of all of these and <laughs> they can spend a little bit of time looking through them and w in advance. And, and I think that might be helpful to know um, you know, is there language in here that, that we could su su suggest in advance? And are there missing re resolutions that we should be developing? And so that's something that, that I think I'd, I'd be interested in doing. To the chair, uh, uh, before, I'm going to... Before you okay. speak to that, are you suggesting every time a resolution comes no. up, send them an email? Are you saying no. do it like a one-time No, process? I'm saying a one-time. Okay. I'm saying I, uh, we could set up a meeting with the equity committee one time. Okay to have it and, and send to some of these, especially the ones that are relevant for them and just have a, have a conversation with, with yeah. them about, about language and about. I think uh, that's so, a great idea. I just so. want to make sure we're talking no. narrowly one time, maybe yeah. once a year at their timeline, but not every time a pre-clearance of not. every that's resolution not going yeah. out. That would be too that, just one in an informational yeah. meeting no. with them that we can do in advance. And I think that's great. And especially if the committee asks for it, you're working with them as it is on, it seems reasonable. And if there's a hyperlink file, they can probably just get them that way. So through the chair, I think that's a good idea. I think that we want to be cautious that um, all voices are heard, not just the loudest voice. And I want to make sure that if the committee does have input, that the assembly is still open to staff um, drafting. For example, um, Daryl has been asked to draft the Black History Month resolution, and he usually signs up for that every year. We're certainly open to the Equity Committee commenting on that, but I do know that Ms. Zolotel um, works closely with Daryl on that. She has an interest in that, and I want to make sure that you know that Daryl and Ms. Zolotel would be the ones then that would make the final decision. I just want to make sure that we're open to input, but that the final decision is up to this body. I think there's general concurrence on that topic. So um, I think it's a good idea. Let them have a go. Um, okay. Anyone else? Ms. Bonga. So I, I know that this is probably you, not Barbara, but I, I would really hope that we look at limiting the number of speakers, you know, the three minutes to come and speak seems reasonable and you choose two or three people from your group. Um, it really, really went long to me the other night. And um, I'm thinking that maybe not every single person in the group needs to speak. It's funny thing is I thought that was my favorite part of the meeting, learning a little bit about the historic black colleges and universities. And so that's the, we'll talk about that more coming up about how to manage that. Um, but yes, that's one strategy that we'll put on the list. And then I have one more. Please. Um, I appreciated, uh, Barbara, the, the standing ovation direction. Um, I just felt a little bit like, you know, 
the next one may feel bad if we don't stand quite as long or we don't clap quite as loud and it's probably just easier to not do that unless it's something really special. So thank you for mentioning that. Yeah, it's always awkward. Mr. Martinez. And special is always special to those who think it's special. Um, I didn't want to just point of clarification. And I, I think you just kind of uh, may have answered it indirectly by acknowledging the drafting from Daryl, like with the Black History Month or with um, Juneteenth, for example. It, is this the one list or does Daryl have a list that's separate or is this the one list? And when you talked about farming out to staff, that's how we're hearing it from different staff. Yes. So um, it all comes to the clerk's office. It's all Heidi's going to farm it out okay. and she assigns it. Well, what happens is we have a similar list to this and we sign up and with uh, 40 some staff signs up for three. Mm -hmm. And if you don't sign up for three, Heidi assigns you one. <laughs> so Daryl signs up for those because he wants to do them. So um, Meg knows he works on it. And so she contacts him separately. You see one on the list, you're interesting. You contact Heidi, say who's working on it, and then you can work with them on it. But note that she also mentioned at the beginning of her presentation that there were some 40 additional ones that just come up. Yeah. And they aren't necessarily annual or built in or any of that kind of thing. And so um, because of that, your question has two answers. One is for all of these, this is all of them that are standard annual. And then every month, who knows when a member is going to say, Hey, we need to do this or next month or next month. And so the answer has two parts. One is concrete and one is not specific. Moving. Yeah. Flow. You know, and I was just really trying to make sure I understood the concrete part and yeah. the pop-up part. Yeah. We can't predict that, but yeah. Cool. Thank you. And I, I want members to understand they have every right to introduce a resolution period, full stop. Every right. Nothing going to stop you from that. It's just when might be the thing that gets constrained. Barbara? Mr. Chair, I do want to remind you, we started the above and beyond. You know, Daryl um, started that last fall. And that's another opportunity to recognize your constituents here in this setting. If it's something that might not warrant a uh, Recognition resolution, although I think they're kind of uh, a tie. I think we've had people here that certainly could have gotten a recognition resolution, but that's up to you. And so it's another option for you. If you have any other better ideas, Mr. Presbyterian. Yeah. That's, I think it might be a little dangerous to show us this in this way. <laughs> <Is> it, <laughs> As a uh, my process brain is is firing in strange ways. The so the, these are these are sort of the standard ones that we do every year. Um, and there's a couple of things that are on my mind. One is that these are authored by particular people each year or two pe pe people, and um, and they're not really st standardized, right? So they're written. So they're, it, you're saying that each year these are farmed out to somebody and that person writes it. Is that is that right? Sorry, sorry. No, that is a mistake. The there's there's two steps. Number one, this step right here is we just want to make sure we get your name on the ones you want to be on, or as the chair said, make sure we don't put your name on the ones you don't want to be on. All right. So that's really all you're doing okay. is saying, I want to be a sponsor or not. We have a separate list that Heidi distributes to staff in December and says, put your name down four times or else I'll put it down. <laughs> and because so it's staff that's drafting the resolution. These resolutions? Yes. Yes. They're, they're already drafted. The, these resolutions have been, you know, I, I believe Miss Gray Jackson is the one that formalized this. When I started 10 years ago, Heidi and I wrote all of these resolutions. Right. And obviously we've evolved since then, but there are a lot more resolutions. Right. So it is a staff person that is drafting the resolution that has probably been around about eight, 10 or more years. Got it. 
So, and so my only observation, and I, and I, I don't want to spend too much more time on this today, because I know you've got a lot of other things going on, but my observation looking through this is, is it's really interesting looking at it this way, because immediately things pop out like, now that I've seen this, why don't we have this one or that one? And, and so that's immediately shows what we're not doing. Um, it also shows that we're highlighting things. For instance, we're highlighting a particular organization, right? Um, and so the Alaska Federation of Natives is a is a is a five hundred one c three, right? And so that so that then that pops into my mind. But is that, what are the guidelines we're using to sort of de determine what's standard and what's not? We can present anything we want, but as a city, how do we develop a list that 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 sort of fairly um, honors people and and things in in a way that make makes sense and that and that is done in a way that we don't do one for others, we do not for others. So that's that's what's popping into my brain as I'm seeing this, and I think there may be some value in having that conversation at some at some point. So. Absolutely, um, to the chair, we that's why we brought this to you, and part of it, I'm not sure if I said it, uh, but. Tell us if something's missing. Tell us if something's unnecessary. We're certainly open to that. I will tell you, someone presented a proposed a resolution for Value Village and wanted us to recognize Value Village for their contribution to our community. Um, fortunately, the chair at the time declined that request because Value Village is a for-profit company. Um, they may be a 501c3, but they still are profitable. And we're not going to do that. That's not what this is for. Unless it's something remarkable that you want to do as a pop-up. And then you get to discuss that. But Christopher's right. We're not going to turn you down for your pop-up. But let's keep that conversation. If you want to edit it, get it back to us if we need to. Um, we're open. And I, I would add just for that example, if and so interesting, but it's not really the organization. It's toward the largest convention in Alaska annually, right? So it's more about all the people coming to Anchorage and we celebrate you for being in our community and we respect you and are glad you didn't go to Fairbanks. And so, so it's the, it's the convention. yeah, this in October, this, that one is based on the convention. So the title might not actually be reflective of the actual, but the point, I mean, points of light, Youth Institute and their annual awards, that is an organization. And so it's worthy of consideration. Um, we just have to look at the actual text. And yes, yeah, so as uh, Barbara said, the whole point of bringing this forward, and I think this might be the first time we've done this, where members are in a broad way given the ability to opt in or opt out in a one-point setting where you can always do that. But here we are because we recognize we should be talking about these things. Uh, Ms. Brawley. Just briefly, yeah, thank you. This was helpful. And just one example of why um, having these written down is helpful because it, it avoids confusion. Um, I got contacted by an individual um, about World Refugee Day, for example. And so, you know, not in a vacuum, not knowing how this worked, I thought, oh, well, great, I'll just move that along. And then it turned out it was it was something that was already on the list. And it just happened to be that Amelia was out. And so I think this this other person was just being very proactive and saying, hey, I want to make sure this gets on one of our June agendas, but it would have saved me time. Granted, I was also a new member, um, but it helped. It would have helped me to say, oh, we've already got that working. Let me follow up. And then it probably would have saved a, a bunch of emails. <laughs> so um, so I agree. And then just a quick question. If there are uh, another one I see, for example, Alaska Pride Fest, I would I think the current title or the better title would be Pride Month. So if there's things that we want to suggest, do we just email staff and then? Just send it to the agenda team email on the uh, recognition resolution requests, whatever ideas you have. If you could put recognition resolutions in the title so that we um, are able to sort those, that would be great. And, and one other question too. So again, beyond the kind of putting my name on something, if I'm particularly interested in, for, I'll pick on Alaska Municipal League, um, something like that where maybe I want to have a more active role, is how would I identify that just contact the team yeah just email you're you're going to email the agenda team and you're say Heidi I want to have a more active role in the um AML one and then Heidi will say okay you know Brandy's drafting it so and she'll copy Brandy on it and then you can work with Brandy 
Um, I think that, you know, I just want to make sure that everybody knows that, you know, we still have to work for the common good. We're going to be cautious that we're not just working, um, you, you know, that it doesn't end up being lopsided or something like that. And the staff is trying to be neutral and impartial with these. So just help us with that, please. <laughs> Or put another way, in, in some ways, these all already belong to the body, and any changes you have to consider have to get filtered through the body. Any ad hoc ones or what are we calling them, pop-ups, um, they can start however you want. And how they finish depends on what's in it. And so nobody wants to vote down a recognition resolution, but people have voted no. And um, so... Thank you. And the magic of government, we turned five minutes into a half an hour. Well, I went five minutes. No, you you all went just, 25. I wasn't blaming you. I said government. <laughs> we turned it. Yeah. So, but that is certainly the magic of this process. Next, we have an, another five minute presentation that's going to take the rest of our time. And I've already briefed on the status of the EO, EO, whatever stuff. And then hopefully we'll have maybe five to 10 minutes at the end for a discussion of pending business. So Claire, you have the floor. All right. We're about halfway through the year. So we thought it was a good time to revisit your work plan for the year. And since a lot of you are new, you can get familiarized with it. The process, this began as far as I know back in 2018. I think Felix Rivera spearheaded an effort to have a strategic plan with the assembly. And so all the members got together and came up with a strategic plan. And then when I came in 2021, I've just been carrying that forward. Uh, we work around hopefully this year, November, December to, to review the accomplishments and then come up with the 2024 goals. And so... Um, if you haven't looked at this already, check out the 2022 accomplishments on the front and back page. And then on the inside, um, so through that 2018 process is how you develop these focus areas. And then they've changed a little bit over time. We added infrastructure last year and then create, turn that into infrastructure and transportation. And then we split homelessness and housing so that they could each have their own focus and then, and then we came up with five priorities. So these are the really big picture overarching things you're working on, the housing initiative, the Port of Alaska, monitoring MOA financial health, public health and safety, and assembly business. Um, so I just wanted to get right to work with a little bit of an active exercise. I have, uh, there's a small copy in your packet if you need to look at it and take it home. And those of you, Scott and Randy, if you're still on the phone, you could fill this out. Uh, and send it back to me and I can update it. Claire, could you slowly go through those? Oh, it's just these right here. It's the housing port. Okay, thank you. Never mind. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, yeah, so I have the top priority as a one page and then each focus area, I have a little tracker. And I've posted them really big around the room. So my idea is I have Sharpies or you can use your own pen to go up and write on these sheets uh, fill out the progress to date, and this would be things that have been completed uh, or open projects that you've started on and are in process. And then write your initials by ones you're working on so we can track who's working on what. And then in the next sec section, uh, we need to know what, I what is needed to get the item moving. So you could say something like add this to the... Um, Housing and Homelessness Committee agenda, or ask some ask a person in administration what they need next, whatever the next step is, um, and then the champion you could write who or what committee is working on it. Then uh, and then from there, I'd like committee committee leadership to be keeping an eye out and pulling stuff that is on there onto your committee. Um, work plans and to-do lists so that they don't just hang out on paper so they actually have a way to get done. And um, in your packet, I also included a format for committee agendas that on the second page, you could take the items that you put in your committee and add them to the second page of this agenda and then just have it throughout the year. So uh, the staff who work with you on those committees will also be told about this so that they can keep that updated and then you'll just have it throughout the year when you have your meetings. And then there's some items on here that are more um, 
process oriented than task oriented, such as join people together to solve local problems. So I think those are ones that each member should think about how you can incorporate that into your projects and your work and your committees and staff will think about it as well. So I'll pass out some pens and you can just go up to there. And if there's stuff that's already been completed that you know about and you didn't do it, but a former member did, just go ahead and write it on there too. Um, well, projects. I, mean, I don't know where to put projects. I don't what? know that putting projects is the right place. You well, said something about projects. This one's a little harder, but like, you can go here and um, identify and address barriers in the process. One of these things is rewrite Title Seven. So you could write part of this today is we have a contract out for the Title Seven. Okay. And okay. then. Um, <coughs> Let's say build municipality 21 building. We haven't done anything with that. So maybe the next step is budget and finance asks for a report at their next committee meeting. Why not? So how about host housing and seven? Seven's kind of easy. Did we just put the way? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. housing return. Done. Yeah. Check. Yeah. 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 So like how yeah. And then, and then next step would be the public and seven. And that's a default. Yeah. Yeah. If there's anything that you're working on, you could make a note. Yeah, write what you're working on within these things. Feel like some Yeah, probably. So I am, so here's the I'm putting together a presentation on how I'm doing that. All the statistics. So, if we don't want to be a champion, but we want to be involved, where would our initial? I think you put who did it. Like if it's still great. I don't want to be the champion of it. Yeah. Yeah. Who's the main person? I have an idea that we can, but it's not the whole thing. You know what I mean? What the perception is and why they created this. Maybe it's like the real problem we're facing. Why do we need to be a good yeah. 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 Same. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
everything. Is what it is. We're supposed to be growing 1.8% a year. Since we're supposed to be doing this, keep this business. Nope. The housing size is going to be this big. And this is the average size family that's going to have. Nope. Oh, well. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> or denial. Yeah. So do um, we want to talk about the that's a good question. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, the municipal league already knows. Um, yeah, that's. I'm sorry. The um, I had to give Karen the visitors because I didn't have one for her. I needed somewhere. She was the only one that didn't get something. So. Thanks, Siobhan. This is a ray of sunshine. Oh, Otherwise, cloudy in this world. Yeah. Um, speaking of cloudy, what is going on out there? I don't know. Did you? Did you yesterday we know when I was shooting at home. So that's for that reason. I put the camera on the floor. My mission is frustrating. But she did say, so they're expecting that. Warm and dry. Yeah, yeah. Bad news for fire. On Monday, we had just gotten back from our vacation, which I don't know we go with as a family. It's just not a vacation. Everything else is just like. No. It's one of those vacations you need a vacation for. Yeah, yeah. come back. So on Monday, we had like this one day before we get back from the work. It's the coolest Two button inflatable pool. And nice. our kid in the pool, and it was such a good time. I was like, this is what summer time should be. I'm glad that you got this day. Who knows what the rest of the summer will be. This day was yeah. the closest thing I got this summer so far is I bought some the kids a big online, big 50 foot slip and slide. But I'm still in my driveway. And then, um, uh, Chris, did it with a little vegetable oil. Like, oh, yeah. And then, Meryl put a big. Road ready container by the hot tub. It was so cold because, like, listen, I'm not waiting for the weather to go. They hit it two or three times, and they jump into the, the, the cool water in the little tub, they grow the container, get the grass on, jump in the hot tub. Yeah. And then warm up. And then jump out and go do it again. So I had to create somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. So you're like, create all the grass out of the hot tub. Yeah. Yeah. 
my involved with blog plates. That is very good. It's nice. Well, you know, I just love my, I use mine. Yeah, during the summer, not so much. Yeah, I'm aware of how many stars because yeah. where I live, and you turn the lights out, that's incredible. City lights are up there, and then you get that, you know, that uh, off in blue, off the mountains, because I have this amazing mountain view, which lights up. That's just um, that's perfection. I love those radio. I like pink noise. That's great. Cocktail <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I see their future. So small. Yeah. So small. <laughs> Luckily, we don't have any of those small people in the middle of the summer. We're in the work. We're in the work. Well, we have a little bit of the, and if they need some form of communication, just show them this. If they try to hold it, you're not noticing. Really, really. Oh, is this some sort of like, um, where I was? No, no. I think it's some good. kind of a. Well, you're not an actual member. I'm working. I'm the whatever you call the alternate. Alternate, but it makes like your game. You can show them that. All right, super team. Um, All right. Can I can I have you regather to go over a couple more things on this? There's some items that don't have next steps or champions, and I just wanted to see if we should cross them off or add any information to them. Uh, so the first one was complete an inventory of easements. We couldn't figure out what that means. Chris, do you or do you remember that? Say that again. I was only half paying attention. <laughs> Complete an inventory of easements. Do you know yeah, what that means? Yeah. So if Daniel were here, he could make it more clear. This is a request that was brought to us by some folks who live up on the hillside. Um, there's a trend to eliminate and take public access. That could be Campbell Lake. That could be um, the Stewart Road access. And there are a number of unrecorded easements that are across the bowl that are used by members of the public to access. And then there are some areas that have actually effectively been taken from the public. And so an inventory is a document that demonstrates where all of the rights of way are and then easements and then where all of the unrecorded ones are so that we can start to make inroads on securing public access where the public has a right to be. And will that go into the transportation committee, you think, or? It's more of a CEDC, it's a land use issue, okay. um, but it hasn't gone anywhere for a long time. And I think there's some resistance by the staff because it's a complex and, and challenging project. Okay. Not our staff administration, because they are. it would be up to them to execute. Okay. Uh, another big one is holding the state of Alaska Bowl accountable to the base student allocation. Yeah, we should be done with this in about two minutes. Okay. I think that one's actually addressed in public safety. Daniel Volan's working on that. So the trails, I think, are in. That's what I'm really looking for is Okay, well, think about it. It doesn't need to be done right away, but if there's things that you want to champion and work on, then um, let me know and I can add it later. Can I put myself out there? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like Christopher's suggestion before. What don't I want to be a part of? I want to be a part of so many things. I got what I needed, Chris. Let's see. Okay.
Right, folks, <laughs> we're running out of time, easily distracted, great conversations. Mr. Presvidia, you asked for the floor. Yeah, I just, I, I, I think I just accomplished it, but I just wanted to make sure members were aware that the, um, for Prop 14 on the marijuana tax for early childhood ed education and care, the a work group has been initially established with um, three members of the assembly, uh, me being one of them, um, Ms. Brawley and Mr. Cross, um, as well as the, the three or four sort of community champions who were involved in, in the development of it at the latter stages. There was lots of people involved in it over time. Um, but just wanted you to be aware that, that we're meeting next week on the 14th to kind of lay out a plan for that. Um, I also just wanted to make sure I know that there has been some interest in other members being a part of that group. And, and I don't know what that process looks like, Mr. Chair, but I think that if other members were interested in swapping out and saying, hey, I'd really like to be in that, you know, is this a priority for you? And that that can happen, right? So yeah. that, so that, for instance, if, if a member who's not involved in that work group, member of the assembly, they could approach one that is and say, is, is, it, would, would you mind sw switching? Wait, say that again, not member and a member? So let me just give an example, right? So Ms. Mrs. Brawley is, is involved in it, right? And say Mr. Martinez is really passionate about this work and really wants to be involved in it and went to Ms. Brawley and said, hey, is this a priority for you? Do you... Can I swap with you? So gotcha, members. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we can. We, that can happen. That's really not an assembly directed decision, right? Because if the chair were to direct that, then that meeting would be subject to open meetings sure. re record requirements at every turn. Yeah. So this is just a working group that's doing it of their own accord. Right. And so if a member wants to step off and another member step on, they can make set arrangements. Okay. I think what's most important for that group to know, if we learned this with the working group on the shelter is that some form of pretty frequent checkbacks and check-ins with the body are very important so that the ship doesn't get too far ahead yeah. before members understand what's happening in case there's some uh, recommendation for a slight tacking alt move. So that's all I would suggest, but yes, okay. members can make their proposal to the working group and say, I would like to join and someone can walk away or if someone can't pick up the right. slack at all work. Yeah, the main the main message was that work is starting, that the work group is meeting next week to, to begin and that that will be um, a, a big big part of our work over the next uh, few months and that we'll be definitely reporting out on a frequent basis. Thank you. Yeah, that sounds great, Ms. Brawley. Yeah, and just to add to that too, as, as I understand it, um, I know the OMA is not specific to each ordinance, but that's another thought is if there's phases, um, you know, because I imagine it's not saying that the the entire topic of education early childhood is, is off limits to more. And I guess my question then, I'm just thinking about like, wait, you know, mechanics of how to coordinate this work. Um, is there precedent for precedent for ad hoc committees? Because um, I mean, I guess, is that another vehicle for some say something like this? which would require a notice, right? But is not creating a standing committee. And I'm not saying that because we haven't a talked about Absolutely. <clears throat> so all of these task forces fall under that kind of rubric that we're having where they are official, they're noticed, their actions and they're members of the public, members of the body working on a topic. That notice requirement allows any member who wants to participate to participate in the process as it goes forward. In those can be meetings separate from a piece of legislation in which some members must be limited if they're gonna work on it in any forum except an open forum. And so practically speaking, the answer is yes, there could be an ad hoc committee established for that. I just would um, temper 
any idea of an ad hoc committee with the notion that the calendar right now is choking on ad hoc work and it's making it hard to get items that are having public hearings that need work sessions because finding an hour in the calendar is really hard to do. And so that would be the only limitation is the practical one. And so as much as can be done in an informal setting by members who are inspired by a project, the better I would offer until it comes before us. And the clerk is probably going to caution you. Yes, the clerk is going to caution you. The Open Meetings Act has two provisions. And of course, there's the one, you know, that there's three members. And, and that's one part of it. But there's another part of the Open Meetings Act that says you can't have a task force or a subcommittee appointed with two members. So that's why when you have, like if it's a true, it, that it does say that. You, you can't have it and not notice it. If it's appointed, right. Right, you, you can yeah, have it, correct. but it has to be noticed. Right, so, so your true ad hoc committee where a couple of you get together and do something, that's fine. But I just wanna make sure that if it's a sanctioned group, it's gonna need to be noticed. The other caution that I would make is the issue isn't legislation, it's meeting to discuss some issue that would be for debate before the body. So I just want to caution you, it's just broader than a little bit of legislation and I'm here to protect you, so that's why I'm saying that. Right, and so I would offer the, the first thing you said, which is the two members working, uh, ad hoc committee, that's exactly what I said, was that if you're going to have a formally created group, whether it's two or three or any number, it has to be noticed if it's officially. I think your caution on the topical part is well heard that it's not just for potential legislation, it's anything that's really gonna land before us sometime in the not too distant future. And so that caution is well made and it just still, I think the practical reality is if there's an informal group of members working on a topic, work away. And um, if it's getting scheduled and calendared and appointed by the chair, then you're getting into hotter, more um, sanctioned areas, areas that we have to be more careful with. And then the clerk's admonishment, which is good. So we're out of time. I think we're, we're gonna op open it up for audience participation and skip the last item, which is a brief update on legislative items because the wall is that. Um, anyone from the public wish to be heard? Anyone on the phone? Okay, so uh, seeing, hearing none. Anyone else wanna bring up anything before we adjourn? Anna? Just very briefly on the topic of the OMA, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get my head around, for example, the huge topic of housing or homelessness. And, and I know I certainly want to follow the OMA. I'm, I'm looking ahead to some, a lot of practical challenges that we're going to face in terms of folks working on, uh, you know, touching different parts of the elephant, so to speak. And, and so I'm interested in how we can minimize, um, con, you know, conflicting or redundant work without, you know, again, saying we're all going to get in a room and decide who's doing what, which is not allowed, I assume outside of a public meeting. Right. And so the reason, one of the reasons the rules committee was established was for that very important item we just kind of rolled over, which is assembly member discussions on pending business and updates from committees. And so the theory of this committee, which meets once a month and sometimes twice a month, is to provide a noticed opportunity for members to coordinate so that you aren't doing double work. So, you know, that you aren't wasting energy and time. Um, the attorneys can do some of that kind of um, lane channeling, for lack of a better term, um, but there's still some risk there. But they can tell you someone else is working on this. And so um, you can get some feedback and guidance there. But practically speaking, this committee was created for exactly that purpose. It's not like all of our committee agendas, you have to notice the specific content that you're working on so the public has a reasonable opportunity to come and participate and hear that item right there is talk about what you're working on. So use this committee for that purpose. And I'm gonna do our best to keep the larger presentations to tight timelines without having a special meeting for that purpose only because for me, the value of this meeting is figuring out what everyone else is up to and making sure we're not wasting time. Madam Clerk. 
Uh, through the chair, I would like to offer an opportunity for you to talk offline to Dee Ennis. You know, she's working as a contract attorney, used to be the ethics officer, and she can talk to you offline about what those conversations entail and how close you're going to get, because I realize it's a big topic, but I think she might be able to help you with that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and, um, you know, I don't know if you wanted to say anything, Dee. No, so um, since Quincy is here, I'll say that um, I've been having some discussions with the municipal attorney in the past. There's been a more broad utilization and relationship with the attorneys on the seventh floor. Um, there was a time when all the positions were filled. Dee was the deputy and she was like the broker of the attorneys. And some of us figured out the magic of it, that not only did we have assembly council, but we had a whole floor of attorneys that could help us make legislation. And they did. And we had a very highly functioning, well-oiled machine that like three of us figured out how to use. And so the three of us were incredibly prolific because we had a team of experts helping us. And so it's the municipal attorneys and I hate to speak for her, but I'm going to interest and in, in she, she wants to see this happen, that that is recreated, that members are able to figure out how to effectively reach into the expertise that we have up above and create relationships and make the work happen again. And so don't feel like you're constrained solely to the council we have on the second floor, but it has to be done in an orderly manner. And I'm, we don't have a D anymore. And the municipal attorney is pretty darn busy Quincy is D. Okay, so Quincy is your broker. I don't know if they have legal brokerage licenses, but um, I don't think it's quite practicing law. It's practicing administration. So that's the hope is to get back to this idea where there's going to be less crossover and fear of errors with open meeting stuff because there's broader opportunity to get help and projects and whatnot. So, and with that, we are <laughs> well out of time. And thank you everybody for this great meeting. We're adjourned.